Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at an awesome variant of the FX Pantera. First up though, I'm heading out at night to deal with some rats that are causing problems in a garden. I'm out on the rats tonight and it should be quite an interesting one because we're actually going to be shooting in a garden. So what's happened is, is it's a large garden and a river runs past it. We've had a lot of rain over the past few re uh, weeks. The river's been really, really high. And I think those high water levels have just pushed the rats out of the riverbank up onto the high land and they've come into the garden, found food and shelter here and settled. I came for a bit of a recce last night and there seemed to be two areas of attraction in, in particular. Uh, there's, a, there's a chicken run here and I would imagine that's going to attract a few rats but also a lot of them seem to be living in a, a big dense stretch of hedgerow and I would imagine that they will be reluctant to leave that so I've actually put a couple of feeders, just like squirrel feeders, on the ground loaded with mixed grain. They've been here now for a couple of days and my intention is that they will lure the rats out from cover and hopefully they'll come out to feed there. Since we've been here, I have also put down a few handfuls of breadcrumbs, again, just long likely looking runs that I hope will act as holding baits when the rats are out and on the move. Um, forgive us if some of the shots we get are quite tight. Now this is somebody's private home, so we don't want to show too much of the location. It's just starting to get properly dark. I would imagine that the rats are gonna start moving soon. I'm gonna talk you through the kit I'm using but we'll tack that onto the end of the video so we can get you straight into the action now. Well, that one wasn't actually on one of my bait spots, but it was nibbling away at something. In fact, I think it might have been eating the compost or something that was in the compost. Um, you may actually have noticed that I did actually check the range on that one with the laser range finder. It was 11 meters, so just needed a touch of hold over and really nice clean headshot. Now, it's not exactly manic, but there are rats on the move and I'm pretty confident that we'll get a few more from this spot before we need to move on.
that one there for the breadcrumbs. I haven't paid the price. Now, I've got to say that I have never come across a bait that rats accept so quickly. Now, you do really have to blitz the breadcrumbs very fine so they can't just grab chunks and run off with them. But, you know, I'm sure you've all got your favourites, but I've got to say, do give breadcrumbs a try. Actually won from by the chicken run that time. I had actually expected to see more there, but the chicken feed obviously isn't attracting them as much as I thought it would. Now, you'll probably have seen that I actually had to thread that shot through the electric fence, but luckily the mesh is actually quite wide. Now, it has actually gone a bit quiet over on this side of the garden. It's not overrun with rats. I didn't expect it to be manic for long, so I think it's a good time now to move over to the other side I've put out those two feeders and uh, it's not far away and hopefully we'll get a few more. That's a good start from the new spot. Now that one didn't quite make it to the feeder. It kind of lingered like it had clocked us, so I just went ahead and took the shot. That one was well on the feed, and it didn't seem to be too bothered by the one I just shot. In fact, that previous previous one that I shot on that feeder was very small, which is quite a bad sign because it suggests that they're breeding. crumbs and uh, not very far away at just 10 meters.
another one close to one of the feeders there, but not actually on it now. I swear they're eating the compost or, or something that's in it. Well, another one fairly close to one of the feeders there, but again, it just wasn't quite confident enough to leave the cover, but nonetheless, it was a nice, clean headshot. Now, I'm going to make that the last one. It's definitely slowing down now quite significantly, and it's getting late, but it's been a great session. The Hick Micro Alpex LRF 4K has performed brilliantly. It's been a pleasure to use it, but also it's just been really interesting getting to shoot rats around a large garden rather than on the farmyard for, for a change. So I've got a few rats to pick up now. I'm going to leave you with that quick roundup of the kit that I've been using tonight. Right, so here is the rundown of kit that we promised you at the start of the video. Um, the gun I've been using tonight is the Reximex Acura. Now, I reviewed it a few weeks ago and it gave such a good account of itself on the range that I couldn't resist taking it out for a proper session. Sub 12 foot pound, 2.2 caliber, which is an unusual choice for me. I usually tend to opt for 177 at sub 12, but um, for ratting at relatively close range, it should be absolutely brilliant. I've paired it with JTS dead center pellets, uh, the 16 grain option. This gun, I, I've done plenty of shooting on the range with it, Su suits those pellets really well. It's shooting nice tight groups with them. They're nice, clean, tidy pellets. I've used them in other guns, so very confident with this setup in that respect. Um, most significantly kit-wise tonight I think is probably the optic and I have got the Hick Micro Alpex LRF 4K. Now it's a digital day and night scope. Super, super sharp and full color daytime image and also in low light. But obviously tonight with an illuminator on, it's also a really clear infrared night vision picture. Now, Apart from giving great viewing, a big leap with this model is the fact that it's got a laser rangefinder, so it gives you precise uh, distance readings at the press of a button. If you feel inclined to use it, it's also got a ballistic calculator that can make adjustments to the aim point to correspond with the ranges as, as the rangefinder establishes them. Now there are far too many features on this scope for me to go through now, so if you want to find out its full details, have a look on the Scott Country website. Another great session with the new Hick Micro Alpex there. Now before we move on, I just want to say congratulations to the Scott Country team for their brilliant Countryside Alliance Rural Enterprise Award. Really well deserved. Right, next up I'm taking a close look at the FX Pantera Hunter Compact.
Right, what I have here is an air gun that I've been meaning to review for quite some time, but just not got around to it. Now, I've got to say, I have actually been using this gun pretty regularly in the field for several months, so you could call this a long-term test. The rifle is the FX Pantera Hunter Compact. That retails for around £1,850, so this is a pretty serious high-end air gun. As its name suggests, this is a pretty compact gun. Now, this version weighs 2.9 kilos unscoped, and the shorter barreled 177 and 22 options are around 78 centimeters long before you fit a silencer. Now, length of pull is adjustable, and that therefore makes the overall length of the gun variable. But as you can see, it's quite a minimalistic air gun boasting compact handling and a nice lightweight to carry around in the field. This stock may look simplistic, but it's been very carefully designed and actually has a lot going on. Now, starting at the back, the butt is adjustable for height and angle and also for length of pull. And you can do that very quickly thanks to the screw locking system. Now, the cheek piece is also height adjustable via that same quick mechanism so you can very easily get gun fit and eye alignment dead right with this setup. The standard pistol grip is made from hard rubber. Now, it's stippled, it's nicely contoured, and most significantly, its angle got me onto the trigger really comfortably. Now, you can swap it out, but I've got to say, I really like this one. There is no conventional forend, to, so to speak, but the bottle takes care of that duty, and still provides a perfectly comfortable, nicely balanced hold point for your leading hand. As I would expect from FX air guns, the standard of engineering on the Pantera is remarkably neat. Now, the metalwork has the usual black anodized finish, and that looks very tidy. Scope mounting is via a Picatinny rail, which gives you about 15 centimeters of clamping space, and is angled 20 MOA on this version, and I believe it's now 30 MOA on more recent models. Um, you can actually see that the rail is interrupted by the magazine, so you need to take the clearance into account when choosing scope mounts. Now this version has a 300 millimeter barrel with FX's famous superior STX liner. Now, longer barrels are available. Now, the barrel is housed inside a chunky shroud which also accommodates the plenum. Now, I would assume that the shroud does provide a reasonable amount of sound suppression on sub-12 models. This gun is actually FAC rated. It's got quite a bark, so I've taken advantage of the thread to fit a silencer. Caliber options include 177, 22, 25, and 0.30. Now this one is a 22 and it runs an 18 shot magazine. That magazine is kind to ammo and it also has sufficient depth to accommodate longer rounds. To load the magazine, you remove the clear face plate, rotate the inner drum anti-clockwise all the way, and then drop a pellet into the first bay nose first to hold it still under spring tension. Now you then simply drop pellets into the remaining base until it's full, then return the clear face plate and it's ready to go. The magazine is driven by a brilliant side lever action. It's in just the right place for me and I really like the large grippy drop down handle. Now the lever can also be reversed to the opposite side for left handers, which is a really nice feature. The mechanism is terrific. It's smooth and positive. As I've said, I've been using this gun for quite a long time now, and the cocking and loading system has worked like clockwork. The Pantera Hunter Compact also has a brilliant two-stage trigger. Now, it's got a really nice match-type blade, which is adjustable for height and angle. The actual mechanism is also adjustable, but this one was fine straight from the factory. The first stage weight and travel felt fairly typical. That then came to a really obvious stop before a crisp and completely creep-free second stage break. There's a switch type safety catch nicely positioned just above and behind the trigger blade. That's very positive, but also virtually silent, which hunters will definitely 
appreciate. So it's safe when the arrow is pointing forwards and then you simply flip it with your thumb when you're ready to shoot. One of the really great things about this air gun is its huge degree of tunability. Now it has FX's quick tune system with macro and micro power adjusters. And of course you can also wind up and down the pressure of the AMP regulator. Consistency is fantastic. Now I'm running this one at about 24 foot pounds with 18 grain pellets and it's comfortably staying within five feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now your regulator pressure is displayed on the top one of the two rear angled wicker gauges. The bottom gauge shows how much pressure you have in the main bottle. Now the number of shots per fill that you get is obviously going to depend on power output, uh, the size of bottle that you fit, and also you have the option of attaching an additional bottle at the rear. Now I have got the supplied 300cc carbon fibre bottle on here. Now on the current power output, I'm getting more than 60 shots from a full 250 bar fill, and I would imagine you would get well over double that at sub 12. When it is time to refill, it's simply a matter of coupling up with the supplied Foster connector. Accuracy wise, this air gun is remarkable, and that is the result of a good barrel, a decent trigger, and very consistent power output. Now I actually haven't done a lot in terms of fine tuning this one, but off of a bench, it's comfortably printing thumbnail sized groups at 50 meters, and it has no trouble whacking spinners at 60. This is certainly a very precise air gun. So, that is a quick overview of the key features of the FX Pantera Hunter Compact. It is a highly adaptable and tunable and potentially very powerful compact PCP. I've used it for a wide range of hunting over the past few months, from rabbit shooting to gray squirrel control and even for decoying corvids. It has excelled at everything I've thrown at it and I think it's brilliant. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode but as ever I'll be back with more in two weeks time. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also do check out our subscription offers for Air Gun World magazine. Now there should be a link in the show description and that will also take you to where you can sign up for the Air Gun World newsletter which will keep you bang up to date with what we're up to. Finally if you aren't already a member of the BASC do have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership. As I said, I'll be back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. Bass provides for me as a member one voice. It's the one organisation that does it all for me. Basque is, is community. We are Basque. We are Basque. We are Basque.